This is Geometry, Chapter 4, Section 7, in which we will study congruence transformations. The idea of a transformation is that it's just a mapping that maps the original figure, which we call the pre-image, onto a new figure called the image. And transformations have this nice property. They can change the position of a figure. They can change the size. Or they could change the shape. Okay. The ones we are interested in today are congruence transformations. These are transformations that set things up so that the image is congruent to the pre-image. That is to say, it doesn't change the size of the object. And you may at different times run into this term, isometry. An isometry is just another word for a congruence transformation. Some books use one term, some books use the other term. I believe you're lucky enough to have your book use both. So the idea here is we're going to be moving our, our shapes, our figures, around. Mostly we're going to be dealing with triangles because that's what we've dealt with in this chapter. But we can also deal with other things. But we're going to be moving them around, changing their position, changing their orientation, which way they're turned, that kind of thing. Okay. When we're talking congruence transformations, there's three main types. The first one is called a reflection. Okay. The idea here is that each point on the pre-image and the image of that same point are the same distance away from the line of reflection. So point A is the same distance away from this line as point H is. Okay. They're just reflected across the line. C is the same distance away as K. Okay. J is the same distance away as B. So our transformation would be written like this, triangle ABC maps onto, that's what this arrow means, maps onto triangle HJK. Notice A matches H, and so forth. Another term you may have heard for reflection is it's a flip. You may be more familiar with that term. It means the same thing. A reflection is a flip. It could be flipped across a line here, vertically in this case. It could be flipped across a horizontal line. It could be flipped across a diagonal line. But the key idea is that it's just reflected over. It's just flipped over. Okay. Our second one is called a translation. When we have a translation, all of our points on the original figure, the pre-image, move the same distance in the same direction to form a new image. Okay. The arrow indicates how far to go and in which direction. So L moves to P. M moves to R. Okay. They're the same distance, right. and N moves to Q. It's still the same distance. Okay. This one is also called a slide because you're sliding it from one place to another. And notice we didn't change the size or anything about it. We just moved it. If we were to all go down to the gym and get in a line and I say, now everyone take two steps forward, that would be a translation. We're translating each of you two steps forward 
in the same direction. Our third one is a rotation. A rotation is similar to a translation, but instead of moving a specific distance, we're moving through a specific angle in a given direction. And instead of having an arrow to work from, we have a point called the center of rotation. Some books use the word turn, and you may be more familiar with that. This one, V, rotated over to F. T, rotated over to D. U, rotated over to E. Okay. When we say a specific direction, the terms they use are clockwise and counterclockwise. So just be aware if they tell you to rotate something 60 degrees clockwise that we're talking about moving in this direction. Like we did on this one from V to F, that's a clockwise turn. If we were going from F back to V, that would be counterclockwise. And make sure you're aware of where the center of rotation is so that you know where to measure off of when you make your turns. And those are the basic ideas. As always, if you had questions along the way, hopefully you wrote those down, bring them in with you, and we will see you in class.